following presentation was recorded live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for the 22nd Annual International Association of Square Dance Callers. This is tape number 22, Singing Call Adaptation. Morning, good morning. Welcome to our session on Singing Call Adaptation. My name is Ken Rattusi. I'm going to be the moderator, one of the panelists for this session. And we'd like to introduce our panelists, and I'll go into some opening remarks before um, the panelists get up and begin to give par their part of the presentation. To my immediate left from Maryland, uh, recording on ESP, is Mr. Bill Harrison. Bill? <laughs> to my far left from Minneapolis, Minnesota, five days a month when she's there. <laughs> is the lovely and talented Dee Dee Doherty Lottie. How about a nice hand? And Dee Dee does record on Rhythm Records. Didn't I see you on another label? Were you on Chinook? All right, Chinook, too. I was right. Okay, on Chinook also. We'd like to uh, talk this morning and, and give examples of singing call adaptation. I think lots of times when people come to these type of seminars here at Call Lab, they... They expect to get a year's worth of material from two or three individuals up front so they can go back and change their singing calls. I don't really think that's the purpose of this. The idea is to show you what some of us do that are successful and in addition share the ideas from the audience because what Bill does is not exactly what you would do. Everybody has a different home program or program that you use on the road. Some of you probably don't even have a home program at this point. I know some of you in the audience are relatively new callers. But it's never too early to start thinking about how you can change your singing calls to be creative. And, of course, that has a lot to do with choreography. When we hear the words, change the singing calls, figures, Right away, everybody just thinks of choreography. But if you ever go to some of the showmanship panels that we have here at Call the Lab, and they talk about singing calls, they're not always talking about choreography, because you may be able to change words that are already fit to the music that comes from the record companies, and that's, in a way, singing call adaptation. I think Dee Dee's going to get up today and show us what she does, especially since many, many of the records written um, nowadays have to do with maybe uh, men singing about losing the, the female love of their life. Well, for Dee Dee, that might be a little bit difficult to get up and, and sing that she's lost the female love of her life. <laughs> so she would probably change that to fit the opposite gender, which is only appropriate. How many, by a show of hands, have changed some of the words uh, to some of their singing calls because th for whatever reason. Well, okay, so we all basically do it. Bill, in a minute, is going to get up and show some examples of maybe some choreography and how he changes, and not only how, but why. When you change, how many change figures of singing calls? I'd be surprised if there weren't that many. How many really just strictly use what's on the, the label, the jacket? Okay. Um, you may run into problems sometimes. How many teach beginner classes this year? How many have beginner classes? Okay. So for the most part, you've had to change your singing call figures. I would imagine you'd have to. You can't look at it and say, well, this has a scoop back in it, so I can't use this until two and a half months or three or four months down the road. If you want to use the singing call, you have to, you have to adapt. You have to change. And that's what we're going to show you today is maybe how we can do some of these things. Some of it may be old hat to some of you saying, well, I already do that. But Bill's probably going to give a little bit of a philosophy of why he does it. And, and since he is a full-time caller and does a great bit amount of traveling, as does Dee Dee, they're out in situations, they're not at their home club every week, so to speak. So they're not always calling to the same people. And they may be able to use the same routine of a singing call two or three or four nights in a row that perhaps home callers can't do because they 
for the most part, other than maybe some guest appearances on the weekends, you're calling on your Tuesday night group or you're doing a workshop and you're obviously going to include singing calls. So we're going to get started in a minute with Bill. Bill has a handout and I'm going to help hand that out. I don't know if we have enough, but we'll do our best to the home office. Okay, if we do run out of handouts, um, we will get a copy to the office and they can duplicate it while we're here. Or the worst case scenario is give me your name and address. I looked at it briefly. It really looks intensive and um, I think there's a lot of good stuff in there. So without further ado, how about a nice hand for Mr. Bill Harrison. Alrighty. Uh, the first uh, part that I'm going to talk about is writing singing call sequences, okay? And the first thing you want to say to yourself is why do we want to, you know, prepare singing call routines? There, there are three reasons. First, you want to make sure that the sequence times out properly. The second is that you want to make sure by writing a particular call down would ensure the use of that call. For example, if you were teaching a class or if you were doing a, a Saturday night special dance and say each tip you wanted to use a plus call, a mainstream call, a particular one that you enjoy, then you would ensure yourself that you're going to have that without any problems by writing. Okay. The third <clears throat> would be that uh, you would know that the sequence that you're going to use is going to work out properly. And all of these are practical reasons uh, for writing the sing singing call sequences. When writing singing call sequences, always have in mind what the calls you want to use and what their makeup is. Know, know how they work. Just don't put something and write it down and say, well, gee, I'm not really sure how this works. What does it do? Uh, for in instance, uh, spin chain through will take two people across. It's nice to know that. Just in case, even though you have written something, your eyes deceive you. And whatever you wrote just before, for example, it was head square through, sling through, boys trade, boys run. You might be reading and say, oh, head square through four, sling through, boys run, and you continue with the rest of the thing. You forgot the boys trade. Okay, so, you know, make sure you know what you're actually headed towards. Okay? Um, always have... And this is the toughest part in writing sequences, is always trying to have it end at home so that you will get that full promenade. Okay, that's the toughest thing that I find, to, to put together uh, uh, five or six or how many ever calls it's going to take for that particular singing call, have it end up at home. You'll spend more time trying to get it right at home than you would if you just sat down and just wrote a whole bunch of sequences. But that's important because that allows you to have your full tagline to be able to go ahead and sing the words or whatever the case may be. Okay? Um, be careful when you are writing sequences. Um, when you start to write material, you always tend to write harder, more difficult um, than what you really intend to be. It's just a normal thing. Um, so be careful about that. Take your time and you have to remember that you are a caller, they are the dancers you should know more than they should know. So what you have in your mind, there, you can sit down and think about it for 5, 10, 15 minutes. But when you go out to that dance and you start saying, heads, whatever, they have 30 seconds to do exactly what you've had 15 minutes to think about. Be careful about that. Okay? Some of the things that I do if, are, if I happen to write singing calls is I like to put music on. Just to... You know, just to ease my mind, <clears throat> and I try to pick a song that doesn't have a lot of variation, uh, something that's uh, pretty much the same all the way through, okay? So that, that I can hear the tune at any point in time. I know when the sequence is going to should be coming up. I can, if I've written something, I can, the record's playing, then all of a sudden I say, oh, I wonder if that'll fit. And a lot of this is going to come by feel, because if you write something, and you take the timing of each step, which we do have, you know, for every step that we have, there's a timing. Trust me that it will not always work that way with real people. 
and don't expect them. If you really have a good, solid group of people, they're going to dance it right to every beat, and it's going to be nice. You have to leave a little room for taking something out. For example, if you did a figure, say, something of the sort of head square through four, do si do swing through, uh, spin the top, grand swing through, uh, something like that. If the dancers are really clicking really good, they're going to do it just like you have it, even if you, if you put all those timing to it. But if they hesitate and they're just not, they're just a little bit behind, especially when you teach lessons, you know that, you might have to take something out. So instead of doing the do si do you might want to take it out. Okay. Alrighty. <clears throat> when you're writing um, singing calls as well, um, try to use equivalents and insert them whenever you can. This will change the sequence and also gives the sequence a different flair. For example, if I say head square through four, do si do, make a wave, recycle, sweep a quarter, slide through, swing. I can replace that recycle and sweep a quarter with, for example, explode right and left through or linear cycle or I can replace it with girls trade swing through. I think I missed one there. Boy, run, bend the line. Very good. Yeah, I think I did it on purpose. Okay. But I now have changed one little idea that I had, supplemented some equivalents, and now I have right there, I have three changes that I can have in one singing call. We only need four. There's three, just that quick. And so try to, try to use equivalents and try to make them so that they'll be easy for you if you're reading or if you're going to cite, you can see them. Um, basically, when you write, you want to just sit down, just move your checkers around and have fun doing it, okay? That's it. The next section I want to talk about it seems to be um, what I've been conveyed is the, the sight calling part of the singing call. Everybody would like to know all the quick answers of what happens. This was a little difficult for me because I have never really thought about what I really do. Okay? So I tried to put together for you something that I hope that you can understand without being, you know, theorizing too much and saying if, if, if this. Um, the process of citing leaves a little room for error. As you know, you don't have time. It's not like a patter. You have a singing call, you only have a certain amount of time you have to work with. One way is going back to using equivalents. In order to use the equivalents, one must know <clears throat> the makeup of the, the meat of the call and the rest as well. For example, if I say head square through four, do si do, step to a wave, I think I use the same ones again, I'm not sure. Um, linear cycle, slide through, swing the corner. Well, I can take that linear cycle out again, and I can use that recycle and sweep a quarter. Okay, or I can use an explode and right and left through. And there's many, many equivalents that you can come up with. And those are going to be safe for you. A lot of people might think that that's memorization. I don't consider it. I think anything that you know is simply knowledge. It's something you've done. You become comfortable with it. It becomes second nature to you. You know. You know it's going to work. You should. Okay? The equivalents can work both ways. Um, you can pad a singing call uh, by adding a longer, making the equivalent longer. Or if the time of the singing call is getting shorter, you can make it shorter. And it will all time out correctly. And this will be all up to you. In my research, I have found that many, many callers can cite the first and the last sequences. They're the two easiest ones. Everybody wants to know the answer to the second and the third. All righty? And that was pretty interesting. Um, I have not really mastered it. I've been playing around with it. But I found I've I enjoyed messing with it, okay? Um, the first sequence, you're going to cite to the original corner, okay? Could, oh, I can't. I don't have enough women here. Do I have enough ladies here? Yeah, yeah I do. Could I get a, a full square? Would you, would you mind doing that for me? Uh, 
Okay. All right. Okay. While they're getting up, um, what I'm going to do is, is hopefully try and go through some of these steps here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we need two more ladies if possible. Okay. Uh, this this will be easy for you, I hope. Okay. Yeah, it's just singing calls. Okay, great. All right. Oh, here they go. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay. If I'm going to, you know, cite the singing call, for example, you know, and I say head square through four, please. Okay, I know that this is my original corner. From the patter, if I cite my patter, I know that this is true. I haven't changed anything. The people haven't just decided, well, he's doing a singing call, so let's swap partners, you know. So I know that. I've had plenty of time to get acclimated to who's who. All righty. And uh, so if I say swing through, go ahead. And the boy run. Okay, and the couple circulate. You know, bend the line, pass through, wheel and deal. Zoom. And square through three. See, there's my corner. So it's just pretty, pretty easy to do something like that. Okay, square your sets for me, please. The second, okay, sequence. I'm going to go ahead and do a corner progression here, so we can kind of, can you all see who's who? Is kind of have an idea. Your time's up. Head square through four. Okay. So we already have an idea. Swing the corner. That's the first sequence right there. And stop at home. The second sequence. I'm going, I can cite to my original corner. I found that that would probably be a little bit more consistent because we, we already know who our original corner is. We already know who our original partner is. So I'm going to cite to the original corner. So and as long as the men are in sequence, any time that I see my original corner, and I'm talking, say, for the head boy here, the number one man, for example, when he sees his original corner, which is now his partner, okay, if he passes that person by, he has a corner chain progression right there. He can swing. Okay? So I put an example in here. Um, head square through four. Okay? Spin chain the gears. All right, okay. Now, at this point in time, do an all eight circulate. Do another all eight circulate. Do you remember where that guy's corner is? Huh? Do you all remember? Where is, where is it at? That's right, exactly. So I can either swing here, okay? Because when I did the all eight circulate the second time, that's when I actually was passing her. Did you kind of catch that? All right. So swing. So now I've taken and promenade home. So now I've taken the first sequence, which we know is to the corner. I've taken the second sequence, and I know it's to the corner. The one that I really enjoyed figuring out was the third sequence. I really had fun doing this because as long as the center dancers are paired up with their original partner. It doesn't matter if it's the heads paired up or it's the sides paired up. As long as they are paired up and they are in the center and all the men are in sequence, then I can swing corner. And I can remember that because I haven't changed anything from my pattern. I know who the partner is. I know who their corner is. So everything's staying in sequence for me. It's got a little continuity to it. Have the head square through four. Okay, now the center dancers, you have your original partner, correct? So that's all I'm really caring about and in making sure that the men will still be in sequence. All right? Door right or left through. <clears throat> Door left. Couple circulate. Bend the line. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Okay? What do, you, what do I need to do here to get those people back in the middle? I can zoom. Go ahead. Now, 
They're paired up again in the middle. I can start right right now ending, getting out to sling the corner if I want to. So all I have to do is remember if the men are going to be in sequence or not. And are they? No, they're not. Center square through three. Are they? Yes. Center people are what? Paired up with who? Original partner. Sling corner. Promenade. Very simple. Very simple. And of course, the last sequence, the fourth time through, who are you going to cite to? Original partner. Okay? So hit star through. Pass through. Go right or left through. Through your left. Couple circulate. Half tag. I have my original partner. But if I have a little bit more music back, say for example, I can do anything. Scoot back. Go ahead. Scoot back. Scoot back again. Okay? Swing. That's where the music... So now you're now looking at what you're doing as far as how the music, and you're hearing it. One thing I'd like to go ahead and, and take a little time with, not much more. Um, some of these ideas that I've given you are going to be ex very simple for you to pick right up on. Some are going to take a little time. And I always like to take my time to learn if I'm teaching a beginner's class because they don't know the difference and why, why not better place. Plus, you have a little bit more, you're braver. If you try to do this and you haven't ever done it before and you go out to a, a Saturday night special dance that you're doing, you're going to be more timid. You're going to say, gee, I want to go ahead and try it. And the minute you say, head square through, you go, no. <laughs> You talk yourself out just that quick. So I always like it when you're in a, in a workshop or if you're in a teaching mode um, to go ahead and, and do this kind of stuff because it's, it's not as important uh, when you're out on a Saturday night special or Friday night or whatever the case may be. You know, you're there to entertain the troops and hope that they're going to like what you're doing so you'll come back again. There are calls that are very long. For example, spin chain the gears, spin chain exchange the gears, motivate. You do not want to begin writing your sequences or citing the setup first so you can swing corner. For example, if you did something like head square through, four swing through, boy run, couple circulate, bend the line. I'm just making this up, okay? Past the ocean, and you say, now if I do a spin chain the gears, I can swing corner. All right? Sometimes the previous calls will take up so much time that by the time you get to the big call, you're running out of music. You know, you're into the tagline. I mean, you're like, gee, what am I going to do? If, for me, if I'm going to use calls like spin chain the gears, spin chain exchange the gears, motivate, whatever the case may be, I want to get to them as quick as possible. I do not want to waste time. Okay? So instead of saying head square through four, I want to do like, for example, heads star through California twirl. Come there a little bit closer, all right? And I'm going to take out the dosey do. I'm not going to put that in there. I'm going to go right into, you know, say, spin chain the gears. Go. Okay. And I'm there. Now I can start. I've got what I really want. I can start citing out of it. And I know where my music is. I know if I have to try and get there as quick as possible. Of course you do. All righty. Swing through. Boy, run. Okay. Couple circulate. Ladies trade. Bend the line. I have a singing call. It's about 84 beats. So don't, you know. Pass through. Real and deal. <laughs> All right. In the middle, square through three. All right. Okay. There you go. Swing your partner. Is that your partner? Yeah. Oh, that's all right. Don't worry about it. Stop there. Heads. Door right on that through. And the head ladies chain. I was testing you. Okay. But my, but my point is, is I, I got the big call first, and that's exactly what I want to do. And then I have time to do. As, as there, I did a whole bunch of stuff. But by putting on the music, you're going to find that you're going to get there quick. You know, if you want to go ahead and do your citing. So if you do write or if you cite, 
try to use equivalents, try to replace some of the calls. If you were going to do a linear cycle or whatever the case may be, try to find something that will do the same thing, and that will give you the difference. You can take just that one call, insert three or four different equivalents, boom, you've got four sequences, maybe five, maybe six. You can do the same thing with citing. No different. If you have an equivalent and you know it's going to equal something, do it that way. And then come back the next time, do your citing. If you want to, use another equivalent. You can do it either way. The three or four steps I gave you are something you're going to have to play around with and practice. Um, I found it kind of interesting to do that. And uh, I hope that it does help you out. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, we, we may need the square again. You're going to require a square, Didi? <coughs> no? Okay, we don't need you right now. Bill brought up some good points. How many do, again, show of hands, write different figures for the singing calls? Okay. Please be aware, and, and a lot of callers really don't know this, no matter how many years, it, at the caller schools that I conduct, I, I find that it's amazing that even experienced callers have no concept of relation to the number of beats in a singing call sequence. There's usually, most not if always, 64 beats. Now you have, normally have a 16 beat tag on the end. And what's the 16 beat tag? That's where you swing your corner and promenade and where the caller gets to sing some of the tag lines. So if you subtract 64 from 16, or 16 from 64 leaves you with 48 beats of music for the figure. And a lot of callers don't realize that. How many times have you either danced to a caller, or even we've all done it, maybe seen where the caller has run over where you should be sing singing the tagline and you're, the caller is still trying to figure out the choreographic puzzle to find the corner to swing? How many have experienced that? What they're doing is that they... Either they're sight calling it and they haven't resolved, or if they've written a figure for that um, particular part of the singing call, it's too long. What you should really do is take the timing lists from the mainstream and plus, and they're available, I think, upstairs at the home office, at our office here, and you should be able to, if you're going to change figures of singing calls, they should be able to time out to about 48 beats of music so then you have the 16 beats to promenade home and sing your tagline. It's amazing. A lot of callers don't do that. They just decide to start changing the figures. And what they're doing is they're either running too short or they're running too far over. Same thing when you see half, halfway across the set where you pick up your partner, your swinger and promenade. What's wrong with that? You have a 16, you have a 16 beat tag to sing and you have eight beats of music, or eight steps to go around, or eight beats of music to get to your home position. So you're left with an additional eight beats of music that the dancers are just going to stand there and look at you, or unless you're going to be creative and come up with something. But it's amazing uh, the amount of callers who really do not do their homework if they're going to change the figures. It, it, you really need to. It, you need to do it for your dancer's sake. You need to do it for your sake. So don't be afraid to get those timing lists, which committees in the years past have spent countless hours going through this with dancers and timing out each and every mainstream and plus call, and they now even have it for the advanced program. And use those timing lists. If I'm going to use a square through four, how many beats is that? Is it from a static square? Is it from a, a, a box formation? And then tally it up. And in the end, if you come out with 52 beats, you have to make a judgment. You either want to eliminate it down to 48 so you can use your full 16 beats on the tag, or what you're going to have to do is if you decide, well, I really there's nothing I can take out of there. i really got to have it all. And then you're going to have to cut short your tag, and I don't know how effective that's going to be. So these are things that we need to be aware about when we decide to start changing the figures and the singing calls. Now we'd like to have a different aspect and flavor presented uh, Dee Dee's going to get up and talk about um, the way she uses some of her singing calls and the situation she arises. So she's got a lot of good things to say. And let's have a nice hand for Dee Dee Doherty Lottie.
Thank you. How many out there um, go and listen to other callers? Go to other dances, whether it be a festival or just one tip. Um, keeping in our theme, Revive in 95, I believe you're never too, never too good not to learn from others. The smallest things can pop into your mind and revive a new feeling of doing something new to singing calls. Um, sometimes it can be the smallest thing in a song, a lyric figure can spark up idea and you can turn it around, create it and do something new with it and mark it as your own. Um, we call it research. <laughs> Working on changing figures in your singing calls is one way. Um, also, changing a word or two or even a whole phrase in a singing call is another. Um, sometimes we look at tunes. Um, some people don't even consider doing a song, maybe because the word text is just not you. Um, sometimes the music, you're just not quite comfortable. It, maybe it's too jazzy. It's just not you. But a lot of times, I think some people, they hear songs and they want to do them, and maybe they're not in your tune, but sometimes, and particularly, I would think that the women out there have found that the words just aren't right for you. Um, it, it, it would seem that it would be easy enough to change the he and the she, um, some small little words, you know, just changing them around to a girl or a guy. Um, so I got some examples, and well, um, they're not all related changing them from, a, you know, a guy to a female. That's not what it's all about. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the, how you can change a song and mark it and present it in a new way to make it your own. Uh, I change the words and songs a lot. Now, I don't know if the recording people like that too much. Uh, especially if you're talking about songs that are really classics. You um, have to be very, very careful on that. Because it's a song that sometimes when you're singing, you've all probably noticed certain songs that you do, the whole crowd gets involved and sings along with you. That would be a place you wouldn't probably want to change the words. Um, for me, I may, but I try not to, not on a, on a classic song like that. Um, just to give you some examples, <clears throat> I don't know how my voice is going to work this morning. This is not uh, switching from a he or she. This is just changing a song that I really, really liked. But I didn't quite like the words. The name of the song is I'm Getting Good at Missing You. It's on rhythm. Are you familiar with it? It's kind of been out for a while. Well, like I said, I really liked the music and I felt comfortable with it. But I wanted it to make my own. So I just changed the words to, instead of I'm getting good at missing you, I'm getting good at loving you. And there's some middle lines, too, that says I'm getting good at thinking of you. I changed the words to, the way you hold me so tight. And of course that fits into the rhyme of the opener. And let's see if I can pick it up. like I said, are getting good at missing you, and I just kind of turn them around, and that's, uh, I got lots of examples. <laughs> here's, uh, here's um, and some people, you know, I've, in fact, just already this weekend, some people have asked, uh, how do you change the, 
the he's and the she's. Sometimes it just doesn't still fit the words. Here's a song uh, my brother happened to record it, Randy Doherty, and it's that that's the kind of women I like. And um, I really like the song, and I thought, oh, God, I can't, you know, you can't use that. Most of the time, when you're changing words for me, I would try to count out the syllables and come very, very close. But you don't always have to be right on, okay? And this is, of course, we're talking about only the gals would have to change his words, obviously. Nobody's changing, no. You turn and chain him right back home. Join all your hands while you circle around the rain. And I'm in a lift and I mean the rain is only one. So even though the syllables weren't quite perfect on that, once you get used to using them words, it would have been no problem. You're getting into this now, aren't you? <laughs> He's like, you're going to do all these? Um, well, why we're... we're on the, you know, talking about switching for the girls and the guys. Here's one now. You really wouldn't have to change the words, rock my world, on a royal. And, uh, but I still wanted to get it a different flavor so that I like to change things and make them mine, make it, make it feel comfortable for me to do. And like I said, you really wouldn't have to change the words a lot on this. But. Baby, do you can't dance no more? I let that man come back, turn through and leave. I let that man at corner weave the ring. Hey, hey, he rocked my world. Swinging promenade. You sure look good in your boots and ties. You rock my world like a country girl. Like a country guy instead of. It is sure good in your denim and pearls, rock my world like a country girl. So we change the words there. And then there's at the end, she acts like Madonna, but she listens to Merle, rock my world like a country girl. Um, I put, he acts like Elvis, but it's a lie, rock my world like a country guy. And you can be using fill-in names and stuff like that. Um, let's go to something that's not, uh, here's one that, uh, I really liked, and I, I kind of heard people talking about this, uh, and maybe a lot of you use it. Um, it's a royal record, Are You Ready or Not? <laughs> Excuse me, Hot to Trot? <laughs> Hot to Trot? How many use that record? How many have heard it? Um, I heard people talking about it, and they said, uh, I can't use that, not, you know, it just wouldn't go over. Um, and I don't know, it's, the words are, I'm hot to trot, and I'm ready to go. At the end is, I'm going to cross that finish line, I'm hot to trot, and I'm ready to ride. Well, I, ch I changed them all around, and, and instead of hot to trot, which are only, you know, three words, I changed them to, are you ready or not? Are you ready or not? And honey, let's go. This was just a tune that I really, really liked. doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl, you can change the words to make them feel more comfortable for you so that you would enjoy doing them. Go out and bend the ring, you do an animal and I'll let that corn man and leave that ring. Are you ready or not? Ah, uh, honey, let's go. Swing that girl, promenading girl. Tonight, there's no denying we're going to dance and keep in time. Are you ready or not? in there it says tonight there's no denying I'm going to cross that finish line and I just ch changed it tonight there's no denying we're going to dance and keep in time are you ready or not honey let's go ready or not ah uh, honey let's go swing that girl tonight there's no denying we're going to dance and keep in time are you ready or not ah uh, honey let's go I love that music. Doesn't it just make you want to get up and dance? 
they're not too enthusiastic this morning. No, there's not. Where are all the women today? People ask me about these things. <laughs> shopping. Kelly <laughs> said they're shopping. <laughs> um, here's another one. Uh, Chaparral, Kim Bauer put out on Blue Suede Blues. I really, really like the song. And um, I sometimes, uh, when we're talking about changing figures also, you can do things to spark it up, uh, such as what was it, the Twist record. I mean, I'm always trying to change or add little things. The, twi- the Twist, um, you know, where you throw in when you meet your partner, Twist instead of sw- Swing and little things like this. Um, I like the song, but it just didn't have enough for me. Um, are you familiar with the, with this song? Blue Suede Blues? Um, the chorus line is... Uh, Well, he does a grand square in there, and he sings a lot of words. Um, the chorus line is, I'm looking for a bebop baby just like you. And I didn't change these words. But I, I like that beat, and I wanted to get people pumped up. So here's where I didn't really change the words so much, but I, I, I changed the figure. I felt like it fit the music, and it put a little bit more into it. I added some more words to kind of fit the beat of the tune to. Walk around the corner, come back a little parcel. It's turn your partner left in the corner, bubble vine, and your partner left in the door. Move swing and make an arm in the rain, back down the line. So you have to touch, I'm in a left in a weasel ring. I got to go down, get down, turn around, do sweat, do Swing your lady in the front of me. So in that middle line, I stuck in there, low down, get down, turn around, adding more words to kind of fit that. Let's get up and go. So it wasn't so much that I changed the words in it. I added to it. I changed uh, the opener and, of course, changed the figures, but I wanted to get it a little bit more rocking and rolling. Um, Here's a song. I I don't know if it was you that told me you do this. Um, summertime Dream. This has been out quite a long time. Anybody use that? Summertime Dream? And um, in the summertime. Well, in Minnesota, we'd say Wintertime Dream. But um, this was another song that I really liked, and, and I don't know how we got got started into changing these words. And I guess, again, this is not a male-to-female type thing. This was just I wanted to change the words I wanted it to feel different and fun, something, and I and I can't really honestly tell you. It's been so long ago. Uh, it was a combination. I think my brother had started to write something, and I just expanded it to. Um, and so every different chorus line, I have different words for it. Um, but the, this, uh, let me tell you, the middle line of uh, say we the ring is birds of all creation are twittering in the trees. And uh, the ending would be like, you take her right back home and swing your summertime dream. Them were the words. And I've kind of changed them all. Walk around the corner, you got sweet side road. Join all your hands, serve a left, go and roll. Born in the starlight, in strike and walk and go. By the corner, out of the left. Come a bit, come a bit, come a high and low in each go. Swing with a pretty little girl and promenading go. Cover that tank tank, it's a beep 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 and a few of the words I can use again, and then I can change the, the last two lines. Three hands you go, you swing, girl, and a little girl, mom and angel, come around, tang, tang, and you be, 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 be,
come on back, square two and a cat and three quarters pound. Swing and roll and a little girl and promenade on down. Come on, tang tang, with the bee 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 bow. Hula, grab the bow, wow, wow, with the ace of dimes and jack of spades. Nobody wins, nobody pays. And the last one is uh, some about barbed wire fence. Go down gate, get on home with your pretty little date. So there I, I changed the words quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's great music. It's great. Um, <laughs> there's also um, songs that, if you look, I don't know. I'm kind of skipped over things. If you uh, if you look into some of your songs, um, just like Bill says, he uses um, a lot of singing calls. He uses for patters. There's a lot of singing calls out there that. Um, you can you could change your words, and even though they may not be uh, to a special holiday, you could make it a holiday song. The graduation class is graduating. Um, here's a song I kind of lost the record, but I got the sleeve. <laughs> Who did? Um, it's Red Dance and Shoes, and and um, Tony had done this on Ranch House, and. I use it for a lot of different things. I use it for the holidays, for Christmas. And it says that the lines were, um, and let your red dance and shoes walk away with my blues last night. And I use it for Christmas. Um, I use it with the congratulations to the graduation. Um, and sometimes there's been songs out there that um, I, I write the words and use for a Halloween theme. Uh, so that gives you just different ideas that you can do little things like that. Um, and let's do this one. Here's another one that I really like, Cowboy Man. And it's not a big deal. Shouldn't have to change too many of these words. It says, you can, you can be my Cinderella and I'll be your Cowboy Man. Well, that was not hard to change for me. I just put, you can call me your Cinderella, but won't you be my Cowboy Man? So I made that fitting. But because it was kind of that cowboy flavor I wanted to add something to it so here instead of um, doing four ladies promenade or whatever um, I taught them how to do a lasso a lasso depending on where you're from <laughs> um, that it's it's like a lariat and round dancing and have the girls step back to back Does, should we do this one yeah, sure. let's get a square yeah let's see this one this is this is kind of the idea where um, you're talking about changing your figures and sometimes you might want to put, um, oh, we all do it. You want to put a little spice into it, like on a twist record. Um, you meet your corner and you may twist. Well, I kind of wanted to change the intro of this. And that, that reminds me on another record that uh, Baby Likes to Rock It, where it sounds like a choo-choo. Um, a lot of you... If, if you thought about it, you could make that choo-choo motion by going single file, and you can really put it in many different ways. Um, I know I've talked to a few people, and they just use it on instead of uh, weave the ring, doing that choo-choo effect, going single file. And <clears throat> I never had to change the words in anything like that, but I used it, I uh, wanted to use it all the time. So I used it on the promenades and put the girls in the lead choo-choo style. And because uh, I like the weave the line lines and I wanted to keep with that. On this girls, um, this is a cowboy man and I wanted to just spark it up a little. Girls step to the middle and go back to back. Girls stick out your right hand, guys stick out your left hand. That's the hardest part. Okay, usually they take about five minutes to do that. No. <laughs> What you're going to do, guys, is you're going to bring your hand up over your head, and the girls are going to walk towards the shoulder that has the hand down. So they're going to be going clockwise around the guy. You're going to go a little bit more, and you're going to kind of do a reverse roller away with a half side shade and put her back onto your right hand side facing in. And of course, we get lots of variations on that. Um, sometimes you can just say girls add an extra little twirl, or they can just pull you right into place. Well, now I've created a you know, something I said, a reverse roll away. So now everybody's going, what in the world is that? Well, she's over here. I want you to put her over here. Um, so we do that one more time. Girls, step to the middle and go back to back. Remember, it's guys left and the ladies right. Because if you don't have the hands 
position it won't work <laughs> okay girls walk all the way around the guy a little bit more kind of reverse roller away and put it on your right hand side and see right there we already had some variations okay um, so I throw that in <laughs> and this one has a long long intro Very long intro. I didn't want to stand there. That dog right in the corner. See a sign, you won't sleep girl. Morning is promenade inside a little. The wet time around. Guys pull her out like so. Left hand. All the way around. A little bit more. Jump her hands through the land to get a movie walking around the floor. time with movements we just threw in a something new just to be different oh, well, I don't know <laughs> sure it is if fun is approved <clears throat> and I hadn't really really thought about it but there's there is many songs that and I'm sure that these guys can interact with the saying different things that they've done you got one yeah, I was gonna. While well, we got the square up, do you mind? Yeah, because uh, while we got the square up, I wanted to do a singing call. I'm gonna do the whole singing call because a lot of callers have had. How about a nice hand for Dee? Didn't she do a great job? Really nice. Don't don't go away because uh, Bill, we we got more. Oh, jeez. <laughs> She was so nervous. She, so she called me up. She says, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can only talk. I won't talk long. And now, now she's bringing uh, Supreme Audio's uh, showcase records down here. <laughs> this is called, um, it's a real new one, Glory of Love on Rhythm. And it's a nice one, isn't it? And um, what, oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> what we're going to show you is what I, what I would do in, in most situations, I'm going to start out with some basic and some mainstream figures, and then I'm going to change the figures into some plus. And basically, the, the, the concept I want to get across is changing the figures in the singing call. How many change the figure four times through all the, on a pretty consistent basis? How many do it once in a while? How many never do it? Okay, well, you, you will. <laughs> um, you, you look at it, and it's got a nice figure in here. Um, it's sort of a little bit different. It's not the typical square through three, swing and promenade. But I change the figure all the time. Every single call of the dance, I just do automatically. Either I'm citing it or I'm just changing it. Unless I'm in a class situation, then obviously if, if I was teaching spin chain through for the night, I'm going to hammer them four times through with spin chain through, and then the next week I'm going to do the same thing. But you can also be very, very creative in changing the... Um, the opener, middle, and the break, and I'm going to show that also. Listen to some of the music. Everybody looks in the weed. Roll the lid. Wrap the lid. Smoke their partner. Tell them no. That's the story of love. That's the story of love. And now the head couples square her. Swing her. And the boys run. Circulate, do a wheel and deal short term. Now pass through the trade by swing through. Both trade, swing the corner, pull them 
time for questions, too. Do you need the square anymore? Well, yeah, keep them there just in case. Okay, we'd like the square to stay up there. But what I was trying to show was no matter what the level is, mainstream or plus, and we're only keeping it at that level, advanced level, obviously we would use advanced figures, is that you can change it four different times. Now, sometimes some of the timing might have been a little bit off, but then again, I had to keep in mind you're dancing on a rug, you know, and uh, it's not the most... Uh, uh, quickest surface that you can be dancing on. So we were either off or a little bit on each side sometimes. But for the most part, it, it all worked out. No, none of the dancers had a problem. And uh, they didn't get the same figure four times through. Um, how many times have you seen a caller do the, uh, the same figure three times and then the dancers start to say it was like a heads promenade half, they start to promenade half, then the caller says head square through four and everyone has to scramble. I don't know if I wouldn't do that all the time because um, it may look like you're trying to trick them on purpose. We have a microphone in the back. If we, we encourage questions and suggestions. If you've got one, please come up. Uh, does anyone have anything to add or anything you'd like to see from the panel? Uh, please go to the microphone um, only because we want this on the tape. We can always get a man to take his place. There's certainly enough men in the room. <laughs> yes. Yes, my name is Dennis Young from California. A couple of questions, uh, Dee Dee, uh, or uh, any of the panels. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned uh, changing the words of uh, the, like the opener, the middle break, and the figure. Do you guys ever go back into the uh, research, the original song, and maybe sometimes the producers don't use all the words that are possible, though you can go back and find the original song and use some of the original words? For that? A lot of the time, I do. Yeah, I I always try to get. It depends on, you know, how much I love that song. If I really, really want to get into it, and I really love that song, I will find that tune and try to put in as many of the words as possible. It depends on, you know, what the tune is and what the words say. But I I do that a lot. 
I think we all do. Um, I think we all do. Yeah. Uh, Bob Roth out of Encinitas, California, near San Diego. A question for Bill. Do you find it more advantageous to use the sequence you had described in citing on a singing call, for example, on the second figure, citing to original partner and passing, original corner and passing by, I believe it was, um, or as opposed to just finding and citing a new corner? In other words, when they come home and square it, um, I'm um, thinking, what, what's the middle? Work exactly. I understand what you're saying. Um, if you're very good at citing, uh, that's what I do a lot of times. Uh, and in all honesty, a lot of times I will cite and I will just keep, I automatically burn it right back in that I have a new partner, a new corner each time, okay? The problem there is, is that if you're citing that way, you want to be able to keep intact as many of the squares that you cited in the pattern. For example, you don't want to just limit yourself to one square because if they go down during the singing call, you don't have music to play around with. You have a short period of time. If they go down in the patter, then you can just you can just call until you think you've done pretty good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but if you change each time, and I know I I do it that way at times. Um, I'm not consistent in what I totally prepare for you. I'm consistent on one and four, <laughs> okay, and two uh, sequence two. I would normally pick out my new corner and new partner. Boom. I really would. But I wanted to have something for you if you were going to and have never really, and even if you have, to play around to say, hey, I have had something consistent. If I start off the, the tip and I know my corner and my partner and I know there's three squares or four squares that I can cite, I'm, I'm sure that I can do an awful lot. So I had, I've studied to try and make it consistent so that it was always first sequence partner, you know, second sequence, go to the corner, your original corner, because these are things that you've already remembered for the first 10 minutes. You know, you already have that ingrained. Um, but yes, if a lot of times if you get a little nervous, you know, and you kind of like forget, say these, you'll start to cite right to pick out new people again. But be careful with that because if you had three squares that you were citing before and you decide to change partner and corner each time, you're going to go to that one square, well, unless you can really remember that through three or four different squares just that quick. You'll go to that one square, and you're going to pray that they do not make a mistake. Okay? So, yes. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay, next. Uh, my name is U.A. Stamper. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I'm wondering how the panel feels, and what does Call Lab say about uh, in singing calls where we're doing a... Uh, the uh, break, and we uh, circle left or whatever, and I'll full around, and from there we do an element left and weave the ring. Uh, and we're halfway across the square, and we have 16 beats to promenade home. We're only eight steps away. Right. That's, you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. I, I had alluded to that earlier. And, and when you write your singing hall figures, be aware of that because then you got an, an additional eight beats of music that you have to either wait for or creatively use. I don't know if Caller Lab is officially taking any type of a statement. I know it's been brought up before among discussion. Um, it really goes back to probably the record companies that produce the records and the callers that write the figures. Um, as many of you know, as you've called through the years, there's some standard figures out there that people will use all the time. And there are callers with so many more and more callers nowadays having the ability to record either financially or they're creating their own companies. Some of them are lazy, let's be honest, and they just use a standard type canned type presentation and they just pick the figure out and a lot of it uh, many times doesn't really time out very well. But I don't think that's their concern. I think nowadays a lot of them want to just get their name out in the public. There's really nothing Caller Lab can do per se. It has to come down to the record companies and the individuals. Um, uh, to say a little bit more about that, every dance that you do, doesn't matter who records the record or whatever, it is your dance. So you should be aware that if that is the case, you don't need to use the figure, okay, uh, if you don't like it. So what do you do? You say, gee, 
and it's fine. You go to the dance, you rely on what's written here, and you find out, gee, it, I'm halfway across, so now I've got 16 more beats to go, and they're going to be home standing looking at me. So when that dance is over, go home, sit down, and change it to where you feel comfortable right away. This is what this is all about. Okay? You've got the music. Do whatever you want to do with it. Okay? If you're not accustomed to changing the figures, we all can find singing calls that are, quote, classics. Write them down. And then when you go and do it, if you want to have four different figures, I'm, I'm sure you can look in your box and know that there's four singing calls, if not more, that have figures that are great. Well, write them down. Learn them. Don't just say, well, gee, I don't like that singing call because it didn't tie, it didn't look right. You are the caller. You are the entertainer. So you go out there and it, you've got the music. You do exactly what you want to do with it. It's exactly like Didi was doing. She says, with all these, she's made them for her. Okay? She, you know, she doesn't care what they're doing here. The music is what she enjoys. Now she's going to make it fit to how she likes it. Be it if it's a boy, girl, or if it's just the fact that I like to just, she likes to write and compose words. And she wants to make it fit her. So think about that. Yes, Gordon. Uh, I'm Gordon Harper. I'm from Huntington, New York. Uh, when I first started calling, I was taking a workshop one night a week and angeling with two beginner classes two other nights a week. And when it came to the end of the year, I wanted to do something a little special for the graduation where all three classes were together. And I took Larry Cole's Thanks for the Memory and completely rewrote it for those classes and, and wrote, wrote the, rewrote the words. I used the figure on the record. But I wrote all my own words for the record, and mm -hmm. it was special for that class rather than special for me. Right, and, and that's what makes it special is how you personalize it. People will remember that now. They'll remember that scene call. They won't remember your figures or how you resolved to get to your corner, but they'll remember how you changed that because you made it personal for them. Yes? Uh, Boris Plummer from New Jersey. Um, my voice is very high-pitched. Uh, I can hit a range basically as a woman uh, I use a lot of women records to and very comfortable with them and what I've done is I've gone out and I bought a mic that would bring the bass out on my uh, voice and uh, again I have changed the words if I buy uh, my uh, record put out by a woman I have made the changes uh, to accommodate me and I had to. Uh, sometimes the records put out by men are sometimes too low for my voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's when I first started, it was a little bit of a problem. But with the mic that I have, along with setting the bass on the machine, uh, it's helped. Okay, again, somebody adapting to your own personal situation. We've all done that. We all have to do that, yes. Well, I'll read from Columbus, and I'd like to ask Dee Dee, how many years it took for you to get that good? And your voice sounds like Frank and Wayne from way back. And I love it. I've been, yeah, practice. Thank you. Practice. I've been calling 18 years. That's a long time. <laughs> Were you that good when you started? Oh, sure. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're never, there's always room, always room for improvement. Everybody knows that. doesn't matter if it's just on your singing, on your figures, on your choreography, on your personality. There's so much to this activity and getting along with people. Uh, there's, there's always room. Jerry? Uh, Jerry Porter, Western Massachusetts. Uh, when you're talking about changing figures four times in a song, uh, there are certain songs uh, that have so maybe a side face grand square and the words are different every time or you want you want them to hear you sing and so forth that you make a decision as to if you want them to hear you sing you don't want to change the figure too much you want them to concentrate on your singing if there's other songs where there's not that much melody where you might want to have the four changes do you make a decision on that? I do um, that's a good point I, I 
And going along with that, I'm going to answer that more directly. I cross words out on some of the jackets because I think it's too wordy. Or you ever listen to the record sign, the guys, I can't get all that out. I can't personally. And so I'll look at the words and say, well, we don't need the and and the. And I'll cross them out. And I, I choose it, uh, make it to fit my singing pattern. I'm sure everybody in this room has probably tried to do that. Um, it all depends. If you have a super strong singing voice and you have a particular song that really requires the sides, face, grand, square, and you, you need to get those words out there, I wouldn't change that. Um, there are times I've had singing calls. I think you did one, Blue Suede Blues. That has a grand square. I never use the grand square. I just don't, and you don't use it. And there was probably two different reasons why we came to that conclusion, but I didn't feel it was necessary to sing all those words to that song. Um, I don't think it's, uh, it was just a personal choice. But in many times, you don't uh, change it. You do the sides, face, grand square, and you do sing the words. And there's also, some words of singing calls that you, figures you don't change. How many change the figures to summer songs? No, I, it's almost like sacrilegious. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, or El Paso, or Riverboat, some of these things that have specific type of figures. I recommend, I tell callers, don't change it. Don't mess with success. And that's basically what it is. Yes? Daryl Brooks from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Changing the figures and is all fine and dandy, and I do it all the time. But every once in a while, I realize all of us have dancers that are perfect. They never make a mistake. They'll do anything we call, right? Where? <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I see some of my dancers struggling with a singing call figure, I try to back up a little bit. The name of the game, the way I taught, I am, I am and you are a caller, too. Let the dancer win. Um, yes, and you know when you're you're talking about here, we're talking about like every uh, uh, sequence you know, of the singing call, you're going to change it. Um, I always used to do that an awful lot, and what I have found maybe recently is that I like to take a singing call and change it just twice. So if I do heads, you know, uh, square through four, swing through boy run, Ferris wheel, pass through sling. Then I'll do head, square through four, swing through, spin the top, right on left through, square through three, swing. Next time I come back, sides, head, square through four, swing through, boy, run, Ferris wheel, pass through, swing. Same as the first one. Okay? Um, I have found that that's really nice. To change it every time is okay. Because, um, you know, you want them to do. But now... By doing it that way, I feel not only do they have time to get accustomed to what you want to do, the success rate is going to be there. They can enjoy the music as well and not have to think, oh, gee, I noticed that on the we've, we've danced with him for three tips now, and he's done you know, a different figure each time. So we've got to really pay attention. I concentrate a lot of my stuff on the patter part because that's what I like a lot. So if they're going to be thinking and doing that during a pattern, I want that singing call to be, and I can still do the same thing. I can change it, but I might change it, like I said, differently. I'll do those two figures through that singing call, and then I will take another one, and I'll do either two others, or I might come back to one of those, or if I'm sighting, you know, and you're always going to memorize something. Memory and your knowledge is going to pop in your head, and you're going to use, and you're going to use figures that you know that are successful. So if you do it that way, you give them time to enjoy as well the music and the relaxation and the enjoyment of what you want to put into that song. Just two more, and we'll we'll break. Two more? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm just curious. Both we've been talking today uh, about. If you will, stand at singing calls. We have an open, two figures, a middle break, two figures, and a closer. Uh, do you ever use singing calls that have a different uh, pattern to them? Uh, sometimes I know, notice that the singing calls that come out just have four, four figures, and they're longer figures. Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys ever use them? And if not, why not? Dee Dee or Bill? Um, they used to do that. Yeah, many years ago. They were great to do. Matter of fact, I have a couple wagon wheel records uh, that are that way, 
Uh, I'm tr for the life of me, I'm trying to remember one of the names. Um, no, no. Um, dang God, I cannot remember the name. I will, but it, this session will be over by the time I do. Anyhow, I've used that a couple of times, um, and people have enjoyed that. I don't use it that often, maybe like once every ten years, uh, because there's so much music and so much that you can do. Once again, you're the caller. If you want to do that, fine. On the four-time figure-through type stuff, remember one thing. If they're going to have a problem with one call or they miss one call, they could be standing there for the rest of the three times through. And I think that's why I tend to get away from it a little bit. Because when you do a normal, standard, seven-sequence singing call, if they miss one time, it's no big deal. You come right back to them very quickly. You know, No different than calling patter. Here you're dancing, all of a sudden people are breaking down, and you're sighting along, and 25 calls later, you're still sighting along, and people are still standing. You don't want that, do you? Singing call, same way. You want to get there quick as possible, let them enjoy it. And that's why I prefer the seven as opposed to the four. Okay. One more, yes. Okay. Donna Saunders, Ontario, Canada. Dee Dee, as you do, I change the singing calls for the male female orientation. What I found with one record, Easy Loving, when I first started calling, I was very uncomfortable with saying, so sexy looking. That just did not seem to be me. And one of uh, my caller friends said, suggested that I say, uh, so good looking or, or something else instead. And I did that for some time. Then I got comfortable with my crowd. And especially if my husband, Alan, was dancing out on the floor, I would say, looking directly at him, so sexy looking. And I would get a great response from the floor. But five years before that, I wouldn't have had the nerve to do it. And I would have blushed red completely saying something like that in front of people. So I think that maturity and knowing your crowd can sometimes change what words you would dare to use as a man or a woman in a crowd. And uh, I just wanted to make that point. Thank you. Yeah, feeling comfortable with, with what's going on. Um, keep in mind that, especially if you're running classes, um, I, I think it's very important to do singing calls right from day one. How many do that? As you teach something, put it into a singing call, it, it really will make a big difference to your dancers. I, I know a few people at home, and I've heard from dancers, that they come to a new dancer dance, and they said, we didn't know what a singing call was. Their caller never gave them a singing call. And that's a fun and relaxer type thing. So utilize that. Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, try to get your dancers acclimated to singing calls. Uh, you very quickly brought up a good point. Um, I find myself going back and taking records out that, or buying a record that I sold 15 years ago because I just thought I couldn't do it. But now, I don't know, you change. You, the way you your, your voice changes through the years, uh, the way you look at things change, and all of a sudden that singing call is something that maybe you feel you can do. And uh, that's a very good point. I have found myself going back and getting some records. But before we close, I'd like to, to thank um, Bill Harrison. Nice hand for Bill. <laughs> Dee Dee Doherty Lonnie. We... We hope that you found something, uh, even the most experienced caller in this session. We hope you picked up just one little thing. If we can find you one little thing that can improve your calling or your program, then we would feel we were successful. And if you see the people out in the halls, I, uh, this is the first time I've ever worked with Bill and or Dee Dee, and it was a thrill for me. Um, Bill's going to be on my